Hey there everyone, CPO here, and in this video, I'm going to build the frame for the DRQ250, or commonly known as the Mini-D. So uh, this was provided to me for review and build by ReadyMade RC. I'd like to give them a thank you for that, and uh, hopefully this will be a value to all of you looking to build a Mini FPV racing quad. All right, so the first thing I like to do is take some alcohol and uh, clean out the hardware, all the machining oil and all that stuff that uh, gunks up the screws and the fasteners. Uh, and you can see how gunky that is uh, just in the, in the Ziploc baggie there. So I, I get all that cleaned off as a matter of practice, uh, particularly uh, in cases for aircraft where I'm going to use thread lock to secure the fastener. So just give these a little wash. And this little container is actually a container for um, a free sky receiver. It just makes a handy little container to hold a little bit of alcohol. And then I get some paper towels and uh, basically just gonna clean these off real quick, dab them down. And uh, anyway, nothing too fancy, but uh, this might be overkill for some of you, um, but it, I, I find it really helps in making sure that your thread lock stays and your screws and nuts uh you know stay in place once you put them put them there and as you can see just this little bit of uh cleaning gets off quite a bit of gunk so uh anyway so i've got some more parts here i'm just kind of try and keep things a little bit separated uh the good thing about this quad is the screws come baggied individually by size so they keep them separate for you which is nice not all uh kits come that way but uh it's pretty cool so now these little rubber guys these are the uh dampeners between the the dirty section and the clean section i don't want to soak them in alcohol because of that rubber but i am going to take a alcohol soaked paper towel and just clean off those threads on both sides of those again this little bit of pre-work up front will prove valuable later on in the build. All right, so this is the belt. And basically what we're gonna do is put these rubber dampeners that separate the dirty from the clean sections uh, onto this plate. And uh, I'm gonna use these little nuts to do so. And they're gonna go on just like this. But before I fasten them down uh, tight, I'm gonna put a little thread lock on there. So. For these, I don't necessarily want to use thread lock because they're going to be hard to get off, especially with that rubber insert. So the trick here is to use nail polish. So I'm sure, uh, you know, your wife or girlfriend will love it if you go ask her for some nail polish. Pick whatever color, uh, you know, you fancy. I went with clear. But just put it on the threads just like thread lock and then tighten everything down. And that will keep it from coming loose from vibration. But it will be fairly easy to break loose if you need to uh, take things apart to do some work. So it should look just like that. And then uh, I'm gonna do this for all four corners of this belt. All right, that's how it looks. Moving right along. You can see how those would uh, dampen vibration. All right, so the next thing I'm gonna do is grab the 10 millimeter screws and these little rib nuts. Uh, and these rib nuts are kind of uh, a metal standoff, and in this particular case, they act more like little landing feet or something like that. So um, we'll put them on for now, and, uh, and then I'll show you how that looks. But the arm is going to go in between the belt and the bottom of the dirty plate, just like that. It's going to be sandwiched in between those two. And then the uh, screw... Uh, the 10 millimeter screw holding the uh, the rib nuts in place is what's going to hold the pivot point through the pivot hole of those arms. Now, these arms can be movable if you choose to do so or collapsible. So there's two holes and the inside hole is the pivot. And that's the one we're working on now. Now, for everything else in the build that is metal to metal hardware, I will be using just regular blue uh medium strength thread lock you can see how the bottoms of the uh, screws from the belt uh fit in those holes but they don't protrude very far so that's normal 
All right. And then these just screw on. And like I said, they make kind of little feet. And my robo grip pliers come in really handy for oddball things like this. There we go. So uh, now I'm going to do this for the other arms. And these don't have to be super tight. I just like to uh, get everything clamped down so it's good and snug. And there we go. All four arms are in place, at least with the pivot screw. You can see how the belt fits to the dirty plate there. All right, now with the uh, shorter screws, these are going to be 8 millimeter screws. They're going to go through and secure the other side or the other uh, hole for the arm. This is what keeps them from rotating. So uh, for flight mode, for example, you'd like to have these in. I don't plan on collapsing or rotating the arms. Uh, I'm just going to leave them uh, locked into place. This thing's pretty small anyway, so... Yeah, maybe that'll change. Maybe when I get a backpack to go out quad racing in, I want to collapse it for that or something. But anyway, who knows? All right, so now all four of my arms are locked in. You can see how that looks. This is the top and the bottom of the dirty section. This is where the ESCs and motors are going to mount. So now we have to put the little spacer in between the belt and the dirty plate there to keep it from collapsing. So there's just these little spacers that come in the kit and you use uh, the using the eight millimeter screws for those. Same screws we use to hold the arms on. And just try and get it as straight as you can. So it looks nice. And there's one on each side of the assembly. And if you get it on there a little crooked, you can straighten it out with the pliers. Just be gentle. There we go. That's what that looks like. Now we're going to add the PCB plates, I will call it. There's a, a board side and then the copper side. The copper side is the side you want up. That's the side you're going to solder to for your connections. So basically what you're doing is you're you're screwing on uh, two solder points, one for your negative and one for your positive for your ESCs and battery and anything else you want to try and power off this thing. So uh, these are also the 8 millimeter screws. And one note of caution, this is the G10 kit, so it's perfectly acceptable to clamp this right down uh, onto the panel, but if this was a carbon fiber, you're going to need to use some sort of a standoff to keep it from uh, having conductivity between the power system and the frame. So if you have the carbon fiber kit, it should come with some sort of a standoff. Make sure you use it. It's not required on the G10, though. So there we go. This is the completed dirty section assembly, the bottom of the quadcopter. All right, now we're going to move to the top half or the clean section. This is the section that is vibration isolated uh, because of that uh, vibration dampeners between the two sections. This is the section where your uh, bike controller is going to go, your cameras are going to go. Uh, we're going to end up putting our battery there probably. So And again, I just uh, try and make it a habit to show uh, thread lock as much as I can because I think people sometimes forget about that. So in this, we're using the shorter, I think there's six millimeter screws and the standoffs. And I'm just going to put them, there's six of them, so all four corners and then two along the middle. All right, there we go. Now we're going to attach that piece that's the top to the bottom of the clean section using uh, more 
six millimeter screws. They're just going to go through the same holes. Now make sure you get this lined up right. There's this like uh, six pack here. That's going to be the front, and uh, you're going to make sure that it's lined up so that uh, the two front edges are aligned. And again, you don't have to wrench these down. Just get them nice and snug. The thread lock will uh, do its work as well to hold everything. All right, there we go. That essentially is the clean section of the quadcopter. Now, there are some options for mounting cameras that come with the kit, uh, and I'll show you that here in a second. But just real quick, I'll show you how this sits on top. Now, this would uh, get secured in place with uh, four nuts uh, that will go on those screws at the top of the rubber dampeners, but that's pretty much how it goes together. I'm not ready to put it together yet because I want to put electronics in before I start uh, connecting those parts. So uh, there are uh, a couple of camera plates. There's one that will mount in the front. If you loosen up the two halves, you can slip this into place, and then it will basically pressure fit in. So uh, that's a front camera plate. If your circumstances make that a value, depending on your camera and your particular setup, so that would go just like that. Another option is this camera tray here. And basically, it just mounts to the front. And you can see here, there's a GoPro, basically, uh, position. And just make sure that you get the strap sides on the right side, not to interfere with the lens. But I'm going to take all that off for now and uh, just go with the straight, clean section with no camera trays or plates, and uh, I will experiment later on with how I want to do the cameras. I may add one of those later, but for now, I'm just not sure. So um, there are these little landing gear feet that can go into the arms, and you can uh, zip tie those into place. I know some people use them, some people don't. I'm not going to use them. I'll show you why here in a second. So I told you every once in a while, I'll add some random parts to this build, uh, and this is one of them. This is a uh, ready-made RC 3D printed landing feet for this particular quad, and uh, what it's designed to do is replace these little metal feet and actually captures the nut for the, uh, the arm screw to keep it from uh, rotating. So... The cool thing about this is you can put this into place, and uh, I would recommend probably putting a little bit of, uh, I don't know, CA to hold the nut inside that little foot so it doesn't fall out. But basically, it uh, captures that nut so that you can just use a hex driver like this to uh, remove that screw to collapse the arms, and then, uh, and then your nut won't fall out, and you don't need a wrench. So... Anyway, just a little side note. Like I said, I'm not planning on collapsing mine yet. So I'm just going to uh, put them in, though, and uh, we'll see what it looks like. I think these are relatively cheap. They're like 10 bucks, I think. Pretty neat little add-on and uh, durable. Should take a little bit of abuse, uh, whereas the, uh, the stock landing feet... Um, might break off a little bit easier if you're hard on them. So anyway, there you go. There's my landing feet on the DRQ250. We've got the clean section and the dirty section complete. Next up, we'll be adding some electronics to the dirty side. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you on the next one.